Today we're going to be focusing on memory, reaction time and Hick's law. We're going to describe the memory systems and relate to different types of memory. Analyse different ways in which you can develop retention and why this is useful within sport. And describe reaction time and evaluate how it can be affected by different factors. We're going to start by having a little recap of the memory systems that we brought into our information processing model last week. So in terms of short-term memory, that's the part of the brain which keeps information for a short period of time, between 20 to 30 seconds after it's been deemed worthy of attention during the selective attention process. The short-term memory can carry between five and nine separate items of information. It can be improved by chunking. The information can be used for problem-solving type activities, or it can be passed on to long-term memory for permanent storage, depending on the information that you are applied with. Long-term memory is the part of the brain which retains information for longer periods of time. In fact, up to the lifetime of the performer. Only very well learned information is stored there. Long-term memory is limitless, it's never forgotten, but it may require a code for the information to actually be recalled and reused. There are different types of memory. We have procedural memory, memory of how to do something. It serves as a blueprint for you to enable to repeat a movement or a set of movements. We have semantic memory, which is knowledge of memory of facts and concepts, the understanding. And finally, we have episodic memory, which is memory of important occasions in your past life. So we're going to look at improving retention, in essence, improving memory. So there are ways in which we can improve memory. For example, knowing how, all right, so educating the performer about the details of the skill. Explaining what to do, explaining how to do it, giving a much deeper understanding of it, help us remember it, help us retain that information. Brevity and clarity. So be brief. Right? That's what brevity means, brief. Don't overload the short-term memory, which can only hold small amounts of data. And keep it clear. So clarity, keep it clear. Simple, clear instructions. And carefully separate similar skills to enable the performer to distinguish between them. So making sure that it's clear what exactly we are, you are trying to improve and what exactly you're going to do to improve it, um, particularly if similar skills are being learned within a short space of time. We've got chunking, as we mentioned. So more information can be held in short-term memory if information is lumped or chunked together. Also, organizing. You can organize the process of learning to ensure the information is meaningful if it's meaningful, it's more likely to be retained and therefore more likely to be put placed into long-term memory for uh, future use. <clears throat> we also have association. Any link any new information with old information that's already been learned. Again, it's a kind of it's a form of chunking and um, taking what's already known and just developing and evaluating a little bit further. Practice makes perfect. We've talked about that statement before. Needless to say, perfect practice makes perfect. However, repetition of any information or skill will, will hopefully um, be, enable you to actually retain and improve um, the performance and put it within your memory once again. We have reaction time now. So a completely different concept, but they are related and we'll understand why later today. So reaction time is the time between the onset of a stimulus and the start of a response. It is an inherent ability or trait and the stimulus could be kinesthesia, it could be hearing, touch, vision, pain, smell. But we've also got our movement time. So this is the time it takes to complete the onset of the movement itself. We've also got a response time, which is the time it takes to process information and then to make a response. Needless to say, reacting time plus movement time equals response time. All right, so you put the two together to get the final product. There are different types of reaction time. We have simple reaction time when we've got a single stimulus and a single possible response. We've got choice reaction time by several stimuli given, but only one must be selected to respond to. And the more choices a person has, the more information needs processing, 
and the longer it takes to process the information, the slower the reaction time. And this is Hick's law. So we have, the more choices a person has, the more information needs processing. And the longer it takes to process the information, the slower the reaction time. So as you can see, as the number of possible alternatives increase, the reacting time slows down. Eventually it will reach plateau because once you've got so many uh, possible alternatives, the reaction time can't get significantly slower, which is why you see the drop off towards the end. There are things that can affect reaction time. Things that can affect reaction time. So age. How old a person is can, needless to say, affect how fast or how slowly they react. The older we get, the slower our reaction time. We have gender differences. Males have quicker reaction times than females, but reaction times reduce less with age than with males than for females. So uh, the female reaction time doesn't slow down as much as it does for men in later life. We can increase the stimulus intensity, which will also improve our reaction time. A louder bang will initiate the go more quickly than a less loud bang. Tall people will have slower reactions and shorter people because of the greater distance the information has to travel from the performer's brain to the active muscles. Shorter sprinters tend to win 60 meter races. Arousal levels will, will affect reaction times, which are best when the performer is alert but not over aroused. The performer must attend to the most important cues which act as a stimulus that they will react to. There are also factors like body language and position. They might give a cue which enables the performer to anticipate a stimulus. Anticipation of an opponent's play by identify, identifying favourite strokes or positions, particularly if the play involves an attempted dummy or a fake. So anticipation can lead us to say increase reaction time rather than many of the factors we've mentioned which would decrease. 